by saying that the expertise that you're going to talk about today is so vitally important to telling the story of why it is so critically important to protect public spaces like Ontario Place, the Greenbelt, and other places. But I also want to say that I think it's important that we not only talk about the facts and figures, but we also talk about the values. The values that underline public space. And right now we're facing a climate crisis, but I think we're also facing a crisis of caring. A crisis of caring for each other and the planet that protects us. And so as we talk about and tell the stories of why it is so important to protect this place, let's remember the values that come from Indigenous teachings about caring for each other and the world around us, and to celebrate and highlight the interconnectedness of people, nature, and technology, and how that can enhance well-being instead of privatizing the spaces that we all want to access and I believe have a right to access. So keep up the fight I'm here with you and thank you for inviting me to be here with you today. Thank you so much. Sure Steve, thank that you. That was fantastic. Mike, thank you so much and as a token of our appreciation, Mike, I want to give you something that you'll remember this by. This is a picture I took from out on the water there uh, of the island. Here we have 850 mature trees that you can see in the background that are under threat of being chopped down in order to make a private spa that would pave over this beach. And the official Ontario Place says there is no beach. Janet Gates said there is no beach. She's the CEO of Ontario Place. She said there is no beach at Ontario Place. Don't call it a beach. And so the idea, the, the, the narrative, or, or is it called malinformation or misinformation? I don't know. But the narrative that's being rammed down our throats is that there is no beach now, and if we spend $850 million of taxpayer money to bring in a foreign company to build something, that they'll, pay, they'll, they'll build a beach for us, which should be right over next to the sewer there beside the Gardner Expressway with all the rubber dust and tire dust and the west, strong west winds. Maybe they'll put a break wall there to break off the strong winds, but then it'll trap the sewage behind there just like Sunnyside. It'll stink like Sunnyside. So we don't want that. We want a south-facing beach into clean water, the cleanest water in all of Toronto right now and downtown Toronto's only beach, and it's a pebble beach designed by Michael Hoff 52 years ago with zero maintenance, zero care, and yet it stayed 52 years, this beautiful beach.